brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Chuck Barris Charles Hirsch Chuck Barris was an American game show creator, producer, and host. Barris was known for hosting The Gong Show, and creating The Dating Game and The Newlywed Game. He was also a songwriter, who wrote, Palisades Park for Freddie Cannon, and an autobiography titled Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which was made into the film of the same name directed by George Clooney. Early Life Barris was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania on June 3, 1929, the son of Edith and Nathaniel Barris, a dentist. His uncle was singer, songwriter, and actor Harry Barris. He graduated in 1953 from Drexel University where he was a columnist for the student newspaper, The Triangle. Career Barris got his start in television as a page and later staffer at NBC in New York City, and eventually worked backstage at the television music show American Bandstand. Originally as a standards and practices person for ABC, Barris also became involved in the music industry. He produced pop music on records and television, but his most successful venture was writing Palisades Park. Recorded by Freddie Cannon, it peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 for two weeks. The biggest hit of Cannon's career, Barris also wrote, or co-wrote some of the music that appeared on his game shows. Barris was promoted to the daytime programming division at ABC in Los Angeles, and was put in charge of deciding which game shows ABC would air. Barris told his bosses that the producer packages pictures of game show concepts were worse than Barris's own ideas. They suggested that he quit his ABC programming job and become a producer. Barris formed his production company, Chuck Barris Productions, on June 14, 1965. Barris became successful during 1965 with his first game show creation, The Dating Game on ABC. On this show, which was hosted by Jim Longy, three bachelors or bachelorettes competed for the favor of a contestant of the opposite sex blocked from their view. The contestant's sexy banter and its flower power motif studio set were a revolution for the game show genre. The show would air for 11 of the next 15 years and be revived twice in the 1980s and 1990s. The next year Barris began the newlywed game, originally created by Nick Nicholson and E. Roger Muir, also for ABC. The combination of the newlywed couple's humorous candor and host Bob Eubank SS Sly Questioning made the show another hit for Barris. The show is the longest lasting of any developed by his company, running for a total of 19 full years on, first runs TV, network and syndicated. Game Show Network airs a current version with Sherry Shepard, interviewed on the NPR program Wait Wait, Don't Tell Me, on August 1, 2009. Barris said that the newlywed game was the easiest program he had developed. All I needed was four couples, eight questions, and a washer-dryer. Barris created several other short-lived game shows for ABC in the 1960s and for syndication in the 1970s, all of which revolved around a common theme. The gameplay normally derived its interest from the excitement, vulnerability, embarrassment, or anger of the contestants or participants in the game. Barris also made several attempts through the years at non-game formats, such as ABC's Operation Entertainment, a variety show staged at military bases akin to USO shows, a CBS revival of your hit Parade, and The Bobby Vinton Show, a Canadian-based syndicated variety show for singer Bobby Vinton. The last was his most successful program other than a game show. The Gong Show 
the somewhat shy Barris rarely appeared on camera. Though he once dashed onto the set of the new treasure hunt to throw a pie at MC Jeff Edwards. However, Barras became a public figure in 1976 when he produced and served as the host of the talent show Spoof the Gong Show, which he packaged in partnership with television producer Chris Bearder. The show's cult following far outstripped the two years it spent on NBC and the four years it ran in syndication. As with some of Barris's other projects, it was at one point possible to see the gong show twice daily, a relatively uncommon feat in the years prior to cable TV's expansion into the commercial market. The planned host of the NBC show was John Barber, who did not understand the show's concept and considered it a straight talent show as opposed to Barras's parody concept. Barris scrapped Barber at the last minute, in order to save the show. Barris followed the advice of an NBC executive that he should host his show. Barris's jokey, bumbling personality, his accentuated hand clapping between sentences, and his catchphrases were the antithesis of the smooth TV host. Barris joined in with the eccentricity of the format, using unusual props, dressing in colorful and somewhat unusual clothing. He became yet another performer of the show, and for many, quite a cult hero. Dubbed Chucky Baby by his fans, Barras was a perfect fit with the show's goofy, sometimes wild amateur performers and its panel of three judges. In addition, there was a growing cast of characters, including an NBC stage carpenter who played Father Ed, a priest who would get flustered when his cue cards were deliberately turned upside down. Canadian comedian Murray Langston, who ass the unknown comic, wore a paper bag over his head, and Jean Jean the dancing machine. Arguably the most popular member of the cast, the show's prop man, who would show up and dance whenever the band played the song, Jump In, at the Woodside. In the early 1980s, Patton was even pointed out by tour guides of incoming NBC tours as his on-screen character, while at the same time adhering to his more typical off-camera work duties. One Gong Show episode consisted of every act appearing singing the song, Feelings, which was popular at the time. One of its most infamous incidents came on the NBC version in 1978, when Barras presented an on-stage act consisting of two young women slowly and suggestively sucking popsicles. Another incident, which most missed originally, was when during a Jean Jean, the Dancing Machine episode, J.P. Morgan slowly undressed and in a brief sub-second shot, opened her blouse to reveal her bare chest. In 1980, he starred in and directed the Gong Show movie. The film flip-flopped at the box office. Its storyline and approach, though including a number of Gong Show segments, was a bit less zany than some audiences may have expected. The Gong Show has had three subsequent revivals, one under Barris's title in 1988-89, one on the Game Show Network in 2000 called Extreme Gong, and another with current format owner Sony Pictures Television in 2008. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.